What is up amigos? Today we're talking about car diffusers and we're talking about what they are, what they do and why if you look up on the internet you'll find out that there are so many different and conflicting conclusions as to what these diffusers do and really what the optimal design is. So we'll be going through what they really should be doing and why a lot of these conclusions are somewhat limited. So first of all, what is a diffuser to a car? So let's say we have a regular car here, this is the back part of the car and we have the free stream flow coming in here and the rest of the car up at the front. And under the body here, the flow comes here and we have the ground here. Now, usually the flow under the body will start to accelerate and that means that the pressure drops. And that's usually a good thing because we can actually uh, produce downforce with that. But as we get to the back here, let's say we have still low pressure flow coming along here and then it shoots out into the back. Is that a good thing? Well, still in this region, we do produce more downforce, so that's pretty good. But if we have low pressure back here, that means the back here, this face here, is going to be exposed to a little bit of low pressure air. And that means that we get higher drag because we have low pressure at the back, higher pressure at the front, that's pressure drag. So that's not necessarily ideal. Also, if the flow is just being pushed along horizontally, that is generally an indication that we are getting potentially some downforce because of this low pressure, but not nearly as much as what we can be producing. So that's where the diffuser comes into it. So what we do is we actually chamfer this back part off and now the flow will come along here and it will start to scoop up a little bit as it gets attached to this surface here and it gets directed a little bit upwards. So all the diffuser does is it increases the cross-sectional area. So the cross-sectional area here compared to here is significantly smaller. As we expand the flow, the velocity drops and we actually get a higher pressure. So what that means is we get higher pressure it's called a pressure recovery, the term. We get higher pressure being pushed into the flow here. So first of all, this rear face here will be exposed to a higher pressure, which means that we get less drag because that's the pressure back here is more equalized with the pressure upstream. But also, because we are kind of directing the flow upwards and we're kicking it upwards, that also results in more downforce. So that's also good as well. So there is a couple of different ways you can produce downforce. One, just through the pressure difference at the underbody. The other way is through kicking the flow up. So this is where we come to the point where a lot of, some papers, like if you look online, some papers will say that diffusers aren't that good, others will say that they're really good. Some say that having a sweet spot in terms of the angle here is better. Others say a very aggressive angle is better. Others say, you know, a slightly small angle is better. What is going on? So overall, the all these conclusions that people make are not really valid in a global sense. They are only valid for specific setups. And the reason why I say that is because, first of all, most diffusers that you see and are studied are straight here. So they're not actually curved or anything. So it's a very simple shape. As such, you can't actually maximize the benefits that you're getting out of this potential idea. Secondly, there are often no flow control devices. For example, you don't have vortex generators or vorticity here that will help keep the flow attached on the surface, which means you can't run it at higher angles and have a more aggressive diffuser. And third, often, depending on what's going on the size of the car, we often get flow coming in or there's vorticity being produced and there's some skewness to the flow into the page or out of the page. That also affects how well the diffuser works. But ideally, what you'd like to do is run this diffuser quite high at a quite high angle attack. And the reason why a lot of people, when they research this, they say, oh, that's not good. We're actually getting a reduction in performance is because the flow will separate around this corner here. So you need to actually somehow make the flow stay attached here. That's either by allowing more air to come from upstream or elsewhere to have a lot of energy to stay attached along here or put in some kind of structural device to allow that to happen. Or you can even curve this diffuser. So you may not start off with a very a high angle attack here, but as you curve the diffuser up, you end up getting a greater angle attack. And that's what we often see on more sports car and higher performance cars these days. And to straighten the flows, to make sure that the flow doesn't wander around in the diffuser, they put these fins on there that then straightens the flow and also segregates potential vorticity that's coming from elsewhere that may not be beneficial to this diffuser. So overall, the diffuser is actually a very uh, efficient part of the car for producing downforce with not much of a drag penalty. In fact, arguably, it's actually the most efficient part of the car to do this. You can produce 40% of the entire car's downforce with this object and only increase the downfall and only increase the drag of the car by maybe 20%, 10%, as opposed to a rear wing, if you had it here, 
you might be able to increase the downforce of the car by 20% perhaps, but the drag increases by like 30, 40%. So that's far less efficient than the diffuser. And that is what we've gone through here. It's why when you look up diffusers, you get such a varied, um, a varied smattering of conclusions. It really depends on the car and whether you can actually keep the floor attached here. And usually the higher angle tack is, the better the diffuser will perform as long as you can keep the floor attached and you have enough energy in the flow to make that happen. So that is the end of this video. If you liked it, make sure to click the like button and the subscribe button and I'll see you soon. Peace amigos.